Hi, welcome back. I love to have you back here. If you're new, hi, I'm Stephanie and I love learning languages and this is exactly what I do on this channel. I share all tips language learning and in today's video I want to tackle one of the core skills when learning a new language and that is listening. Here's why listening is crucial when you learn a language. It's because you can't really communicate or use that language fully if you can't do listening well. So it is not exactly like you can do without some skills, right? You can do without writing. And usually writing, speaking, they're both some sort of form of output and they're super closely related together. But you would be fine in the language if you don't know how to do formal um, writing of research papers or corporate emails or any of that stuff. If you only need language to a certain extent, which doesn't necessarily involve the ability to use it in a highly informal setting. Of course, every day of writing is going to be the same as everybody speaking. You know, if you can do one, you can probably do the other, but I'm ref referring to just a bit more complex stuff here. It's like you can do without writing, it depends on what you need to use language for. You cannot do without listening because then you wouldn't be able to understand any movie in that language, you wouldn't be able to understand native speakers when they speak to you. No music, no podcast, nothing. You're just kind of without this huge piece of being able to use the language. Listening is truly crucial and everybody must be able to do listening well. To be able to extract meaning from the words that they're hearing, it's absolutely imperative. And it's a bit more difficult than reading because with reading it's like, you know, you see the words in front of you, you can see what they mean, look them up, or maybe don't look them up, maybe you already know them, but in any case, they're easier to recognize with listening, it's like depending on accent, on speed, on, conditions, environmental conditions, right? Is it windy? Is it over the phone, etc.? You might not understand. It's not as easy to understand as it is with reading. And so when you're receiving that sort of output, especially without visual cues, which can sometimes happen, for example, uh, on the phone or something, well, then it can be really difficult. And even in real life, when you're seeing, like, for example, a native speaker, their movements, and you have all of the cues, the visual cues in the context, you might still find it difficult because listening is a tough cookie, really. And at the end of the day, it's a skill that is crucial if you want to communicate well, because it's half of speaking, right? It's like, what is speaking with somebody? It's like you say something and then they say something back. And so if you're not able to understand the other person well, then how are you going to speak effectively? How are you going to communicate effectively? And this is why listening is a crucial skill to train for everybody. And this is why I'm making this video. Now, good news here is that listening is also the easiest skill to train. It's the easiest skill to practice. It's the skill where if you have zero time for language learning, because you have kids, a job, and many hobbies, and many friends, and like you're involved with 10 charities, and you just have so much going on, you can still have time for listening when your brain is not otherwise engaged, when you're driving somewhere, um, when you're working out, when you are cleaning your house, when you're just taking a walk, whatever. Um, and I've, been, I've actually mentioned quite a lot of these in my you know, how to find time for language learning video and also multiple other videos and presentations I've given at conferences. Just like you, you always have time. When it comes to listening, you always have time. It's not like reading, for example, or like if you're doing some book, I don't know, like ASML or teach yourself or any of that, when you need to kind of find time to sit down with listening, it's really not that hard. Anytime that your mind is not engaged, you can do it. And so it's one of the most important skills of language learning, but it's also one of the easiest, absolute easiest to practice just because, just because there's so much availability of times in the day when you can practice it. Not because it's easy as in, oh, everybody can, you know, understand everything in a foreign language. No, no, no. It's just easy to find time to practice it. And that's the good news. You can get better at this because you're just going to have more opportunities to practice it than any other skill. And thankfully, there are so many options. You don't have to do audiobooks, for example. You can also train this skill by, well, speaking with native speakers, but it's actually a two-way street. You actually train speaking as well. But if you also want to do like pure listening practice, you can listen to music, the radio, podcasts, news in different languages, or even YouTube channels. You don't have to watch everything in a YouTube video. A lot of times you can just listen. So that makes it quite easy. And so even if there are not that many resources in the foreign language, you can always get access 
to radio from across the world, for example, or to different podcasts, etc. And so the first crucial step when it comes to listening is to pick exactly what you want to listen to and hear. I advise for you to take into consideration several things. One of the most important ones is something of interest. Otherwise, you know, when something bores you to death, it's really difficult to listen and to learn. And it's important for input to be compelling. Uh, and so make sure that you take care of that and you pick something that you personally like or at least remotely care about. Uh, and then on the other hand, another important factor when you pick what to listen to is also to consider the different format of what you want to listen to. So for example, if you know that you can't commit long periods of time, you might not want to listen to a one hour podcast, especially if you feel like if you interrupt it, you don't enjoy it as much. If you don't mind the interruptions, you know, forget it. But if you mind the interruptions, then you know, make sure that you're realistic about your goals, your timetable, you know, your schedule, etc. Make sure that everything is fitting within your routine. So what I mean is that if you know that you only have 15 minutes, if you know that you want to be done in 15 minutes, maybe pick a simpler podcast of design for language learners. They usually have shorter episodes or maybe pick like a chapter of a book. Those can be done in 15 minutes, for example. So do an audiobook or do some radio, do some music, uh, do a short YouTube video. And if you know you have a lot of time because you're cleaning your house, then maybe go for a long form podcast, etc. Just make sure that you kind of match the duration if that bothers you. And if it doesn't, just go on to the next step, which is pick something that's appropriate to your difficulty level. It's very important that it's not extremely difficult because listening is not like reading. It's not as easy to push through because I feel like with reading you can afford to go a bit more difficult than you like because then you can look things up, perhaps not too much because that's a big rule in reading uh, as I mentioned also in the video that I did on that topic but in general um, I think that it's very good if you are not overly concerned with looking things up when you're listening. So you need to be able to understand a large amount of what you are listening to. And in order for that to happen, you need to pick something that is good for your level. Not too easy because I feel like if you understand every single word, every single little thing, it's like, are you even learning that much? Perhaps you are because you're solidifying a lot of structures, a lot of patterns, but maybe you're not picking up nearly as much of your vocabulary. So I'd say this kind of zone where it's a little bit beyond your grasp is great for listening. It's usually the same is true for reading, but for reading I feel, again, like you can go a bit more difficult, you know, with more difficult stuff, a little bit more than you can afford to in listening. Listening is just harder to look up a new word. Sometimes you don't even know how to spell it, etc. Sometimes you can look it up, but it's usually a bit more difficult. So make sure that you pick the level really, really carefully. Now, once you started to listen, how do you actually effectively listen? Well, it's very important to identify sounds, words, phrases, where one word ends and another one begins. Sometimes that can be extremely difficult, especially when you're a newbie in a language. So an example that I actually gave already in my, you know, tips on how to speak English better video, is like when you're listening, it's very important to pay attention to stress. Stress in the word is a great, great clue. Whenever you're not able to really hear that well, because I don't know, like it's somebody speaking too quickly, or the audio quality is not good, or you're on the phone and you're like kind of breaking up, not hearing everything, or there's like wind outside, or whatever. In any case, whenever you're not able to fully hear, or you're fully hearing, but it's just too fast for you and too difficult for you, and the accent is throwing you off, etc. Well, then it is extremely important to pay attention to pay attention to stress. Because stress is gonna give you some clues about what the word might be and just like make it easier for you to understand. For example, if you're on the phone, you might not necessarily hear the difference between photograph and photographer and photography and all of those kind of similar words. But you know, if it's photograph versus photography, the stress is in a different place. So that's gonna give you like a little bit of a clue about the word. And that's the same thing that happens in many different languages and in many different contexts. Stress is really gonna help you figure out the most important part of a word so that you can then piece together what the word might be and kind of figure it out from the context. Which leads me to the next point of just paying attention to context clues. So when you're listening, sometimes you're not going to be able to hear everything, but in order to get the whole meaning of the whole phrase, of the whole sentence, which well, really helps if you're paying attention to the context in which that word that you just didn't hear or perhaps don't even know, well, the context within which it is situated, um, that's going to be super important. So pay attention to that. Make sure that you're paying attention to the context and using all of the clues that you might get. So whether it is context or stress or perhaps creating connections because you've noticed that generally 
you know, certain words kind of go together and you know that and you've noticed it based on your experience and you kind of, you know, figure it out that way that usually, oh, these words usually go together. It's kind of like the way that those phrases work, etc. Then that's going to help you as well. Another thing that is important to do is to adjust to difficult sounds, especially if there are sounds that are not really common in your own native language. You need to be paying attention to them, not just when you're learning to speak, when you're learning the correct pronunciation, but also whenever you're listening. Because if you are not paying attention to those sounds, sometimes you can hear the difference. For example, in many Slavic languages, there's this like soft versus hard consonants, and you know the difference might not be perceptible to the non-Slavic ear or um, certain tones, for example, in tonal languages, uh, you know, so it's not necessarily different, difficult sounds or difficult tones, but you need to attune your ear to that. And it's really it takes a lot of training and takes a lot of listening for you to be able to get used to stuff like that. And if you're not paying attention to those difficult sounds, tones, whatever it might be, well, then you might misunderstand the sentence completely. You might reply back something that is totally wrong also if you're not pronouncing correctly, but with listening, the same thing goes, you know, you might not get it right. So when you're training your pronunciation, you must also remember that training listening is just as important. So train your ear to notice those sounds, notice those patterns, replay examples of certain words that contain these confusing sounds before you get in with your, you know, true listening, so to speak so that you can learn to recognize them because a lot of the times it's about paying attention. Paying attention is a big deal in language learning and we actually discussed this in my conversation with uh, Steve Kaufman. He calls it the ability to notice and I love that because truly the ability to notice is going to make a huge difference in your listening but just in language learning in general. But in, within the context of listening, the ability to notice plays a huge role because without it, sometimes you sort of miss those sounds. So you really need to be making sure that you're paying attention to those things and that you're training your ear to recognize difficult sounds and tones. Along a similar line and again involving the ability to notice, again involving this kind of noticing patterns etc is that you need to also tune your ear to filler words so that they don't mess it up for you. Sometimes if you're not really attuned to filler words you might think that they're part of another word and they're not or you might just misunderstand, you might not really get the whole connection in the sentence so make sure that you look up the filler words that are most common in that language make sure that you also pay attention to them when you're listening in that language again utilizing just this training this ability to notice because it is very important that filler words don't trip you up because sometimes in many languages they're overly used and that can really create confusing situations and especially if you're listening to something more casual like a podcast filler words might come up so much that you need to be able to pay attention to them so keep that in the back of your mind whenever you do your listening practice again within the category of paying attention omitted syllables and sounds or general contractions that usually are used. For example, when it, when it comes to omitted syllables or sounds, just look to French, <laughs> almost everything is omitted. When it comes to contractions, you know, kind of like the English cannot versus can't, etc. So a lot of those things, they're kind of similar. You know, one of those are regular contractions, other might be regularly omitted syllables just because they're not pronounced, or some might be just omitted in everyday speech whenever native speakers are speaking quickly, like that happens a lot in my native language, Bulgarian, for example. Whatever the case, you need to make sure that you're attuned to those. So make sure that you research them a bit so that you know what to expect, so that you're not confused when you hear it, especially in listening. This matters so, so much because contractions in reading are like whatever. They don't matter you much, but a lot of native speakers, and depending on accent, they might omit different things. So really pay attention to that and make sure that you look up what is usually omitted. And lastly, pay attention to exaggeration. I've again spoken about this in my English speaking video, the one in which I give tips on how to speak English better. So when it comes to exaggerations, they are common in some languages, they're not common in others, but in other languages what happens is like things are being under exaggerated, so like they're being diminished in importance, I guess. So if you like something, you know, in some languages you just say you like it, in some like English you might say you love it, and then in some you might say that it's okay or that it's fine, even though you actually really like it. 
So, you know, whether you're underestimating something with your speech or you're exaggerating, etc., it's really important when it comes to listening and to speaking to be able to understand those hard points. It's also translates to reading, really, when it comes to just kind of reading between the lines and knowing what it's about. So, pay attention to the culture, uh, the cultural context of that language is super important, you know, because a lot of times those things are cultural. You know, exaggeration is cultural. Saying the things as they are, for example, is also cultural, so really really look it up and make sure that you immerse yourself in the culture so the next time you're listening you're better able to understand that exaggeration or the lack of such. Another really important aspect of good and effective listening practice in a foreign language is to not look up every word. Same as in reading, of course, it is a great thing to follow because usually when you look up every word you're interrupting the valuable learning process. It's not just boring and frustrating and likely to make you give up more quickly which is a big enough deal. No, it's not just that, it's also actually interrupting your picking up of just grammar structures subconsciously, different patterns of how the language works, different way of expression, of saying things, etc. It's really gonna interrupt that flow and it's gonna interrupt that process. Uh, whether you're listening or you're reading, it's very important to not look up every word. So using context clues, using you know the other words in a sentence to figure out the word that you're not understanding is a great way to go. And a lot of times it's good not to look up words as you're going, even if they repeat several times. But if they repeat too many times sometimes, I don't think there's a magic number, but just if they repeat a few times and you're getting frustrated and you want to know what a word means, you can look it up, but stopping to look up every single word is going to be detrimental at the end of the day. So if you can sort of figure out the meaning from the context, move on. If, you know, if it's repeating too many times, then stop, look it up. Or if you need to, for example, just look up that word, even if it's only once, just because if you don't look it up, you can't move on. You're like, okay, I'm not getting the, the stuff that's following after, what do I do? Well, then you can go back and look it up. But in general, it's much better to rely on context and grasping the overall meaning than looking it up and interrupting the process because it's not fun, but it's also not efficient. And when you interrupt the whole kind of story and flow, you're interrupting the learning. Because truly when it comes to input, if you are learning through input, it's very important to keep the whole flow going, to keep the context going, to keep the story going. Um, so make sure that you're not looking at every single word. And then I would also, I would just mention fun. It's very important to have fun when you're listening because it's one of the more fun language activities. You know, sometimes maybe you might want to do something boring, something that you consider boring. I don't recommend it, but you know, sometimes you might want it. You might want to look up a certain rule, etc. This thing is supposed to be fun. It's not supposed to be like a drill or answering comprehension questions, which, by the way, I hate and would never recommend anybody to do, but that's a different topic. Um, you know, this thing is supposed to be fun and it's supposed to be about getting good input and it's often when you're doing other stuff. It might be when you're doing something that's not fun, like, I don't know, being stuck in traffic. So, you know, you might as well make sure that the activity of listening is fun. You might as well make sure that you're picking topics that you actually like. So this is what I recommend to actually turn this into a fun activity. You learn much more quickly this way. There's enough studies to confirm this, that you know, learning is just set up when we're having fun. So make sure that you're having fun with listening, especially listening is an activity that is crucial. It's crucial. Something else that I recommend and I'm mentioning in this video is shadowing. And hear me out, you might be thinking, okay, shadowing is like repeating after the speaker. Why is she recommending this in a listening video? Here's why, because usually we look at things like listening, reading, speaking, writing, etc. as separate skills, but they all merge together. It's really you being able to use the language in different ways and sometimes the boundaries are a bit blurry and I think it's very important, especially when you're speaking, it's like a two-way street, you know, your output, input, both coming in together at the same time, you know, you're producing output, getting an input, etc. So, I feel like it's important to mention here and shadowing is more passive than if you were just like speaking, for example, with somebody or trying to describe your surroundings or doing any of those like self-talk exercises. Same thing with writing, you know, you it's a bit more active than listening. Listening is more about input and I feel like shadowing is also about input. Because with shadowing, it's like it can actually help train your ear when you hear your own voice repeating certain words and sounds. For example, that I was speaking about earlier in the video, you know, training your ear to diff difficult stuff. Uh, or to contractions, etc. So it can help you with that when you hear your own voice doing, you know, making those sounds, doing those things. 
Um, but then on the other hand, it's also good because it can also help you train your pronunciation, which is super important when you're speaking. And listening and speaking go hand in hand sometimes, sometimes they don't. But in general, shadowing, you're not really thinking about building your own statements, you're mostly like debating, etc. So I feel like it's more of a passive activity, and I really wanted to mention it in this video because sometimes you kind of you're able to hear better when you shadow because you're there's something about hearing your own voice saying those words, it's kind of cementing it and making sure that next time you recognize those sounds a bit better. And of course, the added bonus of just having better pronunciation when you speak. So try it out and let me know what you think of shadowing. So here's another crucial tip. I feel like it's very important for some languages to listen to different accents. It's such a huge deal. Like for example, if you're studying English, um, you know, a lot of times, for example, schools in Europe will teach British English and then you're exposed to American English so much and then you're like, what? Like, what is that? Or, for example, you go to the workplace and you see many people from India or Australia or South Africa and they all have different English accents and you are just left in confusing situations because you don't know what they're saying and that's a terrible place to be in. Same thing with Spanish, for example, you know, if you only ever studied like one accent or one dialect of a language and you're left with like not knowing the rest. So I think it's important, even if you're focusing on one form and version of the language, that's fine. But make sure that at least with listening you get exposed to different accents because you cannot rely that every time that you need to use a language, the speaker is going to be from the country with which you're comfortable. To, you know, to listen to that form of the language. You just can't rely on that. So it's very important to make sure that you actually have the option to understand people from different places, from different countries. For example, English is not my native language. And for many people all over the world, we're gonna be second language speakers of English. So, you know, it's important for you as a learner of English to not just get native level input, but also sometimes, especially when you're advanced enough, to also hear different accents of people that, you know, who's English is not their native language and they're just like speaking and you need to be able to understand them as well because you know tomorrow you might be working with them etc. So it's important to be able to understand different accents and I would advise whatever language you're learning to make sure that you're exposed to many different accents. Again, you might prefer to use one yourself, you might be focused on one, you might know the vocabulary of one better than the vocabulary of another version of the language, but that that's okay, you still need to be able to understand people from different countries. So I would definitely recommend make sure you are exposed to many different accents when you're listening. Now when it comes to listening, sometimes I get the question of whether you know we should listen to the same thing twice. I think that it can be good, I think that it can also be bad, it really depends on your own preferences. So if you don't be really boring and discouraging to you, then don't listen to the same thing twice. I personally don't because it would be really boring and discouraging to me and then I just can't. I just can't do it. I can listen to a podcast that's super similar, for example, on a similar topic like that's basically discussing, actually that basically from a person that believes the same thing, like the person who I just listened to, and they can be saying super similar things, but I cannot listen to the exact same sentences for the second time, I'll be bored. You know, obviously this doesn't apply to music, I can listen to the same thing a million times, but when it comes to podcasts, audiobooks, etc., I just can't, I just can't. You know, actually, audiobooks maybe I might be able to, but like after months have passed and I've kind of forgotten the book a bit and then I can go back if I loved it a lot, but mostly, no. Uh, but if you feel like it helps you solidify, if you're not bored, if you feel like you're, in, you know, doubling down and making sure you hear those unknown words one more time, then go for it. It's all about personal preference here. Same with taking notes. That's a question that I also get a lot. And I'll say the same thing I said when it comes to reading, you know, same thing for listening. You should only take notes if you want to. I feel like notes are super, super useful for some people that really like to use them and they feel like they're learning better that way. Great. If notes feel like a chore, then just don't do them. So when it comes to questions like that, I feel like it's a lot about personal preference and personal learning style and mostly learning preference, not so much style actually. And there's really no correct answer. Notes, no notes, I don't know. Just you to you. And to conclude, here are the last two tips. To trust the process and to tailor it to your own unique situation. I know that it can be frustrating sometimes. You feel like you're not progressing, especially if you hit the intermediate plateau. I have a video that's gonna pop up on the screen somewhere that's actually me talking about how to overcome this, but in general, many times we feel like we're not going anywhere, but trust the process, you know, trust that this is working because it always works. 
you know, maybe it doesn't work as quickly as you want it to because there can be many different factors that affect the speed of language learning. You know, maybe it's not working in the way that you expected it to, but it always works. And if you trust the process and if you trust that what you're doing is actually going to bring you um, good results, such as listening in this case, for example, then it's going to work for you. So please trust the process and then tailor it to your own unique situation because, as I mentioned, you know, consider the length, the difficulty, the type of stuff you want to listen to, etc. But make sure that you're also tailoring it in terms of like how often, when, what chunks of time, etc. When you're doing which activities, maybe working out is a great meditative time for you and you don't want to listen when you do that. For somebody else, perhaps they'd be bored if they're not listening to something, so they want to do that. Um, you know, just make sure that you're tailoring it to your own circumstances. Forget all of the advice of when to do it, etc. Just make sure that you're finding time in your own day based on your own preferences. Whenever there's a rule that I mentioned and you try it out, so it can be, because they're rarely rules, they're more like tips and suggestions and what I've seen works well. But whenever there's something and you feel like it doesn't work for you, don't be afraid to change it. You know, don't be afraid to say, I actually love doing this thing that Stefan said I shouldn't do, so I'm gonna go ahead and do it. Yeah, it doesn't work that it did. You know, make sure that you're doing stuff to your own liking. What I gave are guidelines, and I think they'll be useful for most of you, but for those of you that think that, you know, there's some changes that need to be made, never be afraid to make those changes. So I leave you on that note. Thank you so much for watching this video. As always, I invite you to like and subscribe because it truly helps me as a creator and my channel. And let me know if you have any comments, any suggestions, uh, any questions in the section, the comment section down below. And I'll see you again here in a week. In the meantime, have a lovely rest of your day or evening, etc. And I'll see you soon. Bye for now.